Okay, welcome back to the lab. Today on the bench we have a 7B92A, which I'm going to be doing a full calibration on. I do not know if this unit works or doesn't work. It came with a couple of scopes I bought. I'm going to check it in and get it ready for service on the bench. This is the 500 megahertz amplifier. The 7B10s are the 1 gigahertz amplifiers. Turns out I do have one of those. It's a surprise. It came without a tag and it looked like a 7B80, but it turned out to be a 7B10. So that was fun. I have the calibration document. The plugin is in an extender. You can do a vertical without the extender. You cannot do a horizontal without the extender. The controls are up top and on the side over here. So you have to have the extender to to get that done. The 7B92 is 500 megahertz, so I have it in a 7904 frame. 7904 is the 500 megahertz frame. It's the fastest frame tech made without the microchannel plate CRT. So if the microchannel plates aren't meticulously taken care of with the intensity levels, they dim very quickly. And getting one that's in good shape is starting to become hard given how far they are. The Bright Eye in the 2000 series had a lot better protections in it than the 7104 did. So the 7104, getting a good tube in that is kind of is very hard to do. And because it's the one gigahertz tube with a distributed plate CRT, changing the tube in a 7104 is very hard to do. So that's why I topped out at uh, at 500 megahertz for analog. If I have to go faster than that, I'll get a better digital scope. But at the moment, 500 megahertz is as fast as I need. Uh, I looked at the gear that we need for this one. So I've got the scope warming up. I've got up top in the TM500 frame. I have the TG501, the PG506, the... SG-503 and the SG-504. So the medium frequency and high frequency sine wave generators, the calibration generator, which probably won't need for this one except for the fast rise outputs, and the time mark generator, which I will absolutely need for this one. This is the first unit, though, that I've worked on where the PG-506 was spec'd as opposed to the Type 184. So that's good there. These 7B92s are destined for this scope, the 7904, but they're also destined for the 7854 that we took to, that we took a look at in a previous video. I will probably have one of these time bases in there and one of these time bases in the um, 7904. The reason these are valuable is because they do all the functions that the delaying and the delaying, the delayed and the delaying time base both do. So you can get them all done out of one 574 so it can leave the second horizontal open for another plug-in and not lose any functionality on the scope. So these are really powerful plug-ins, but with that, that also means there's a lot, <laughs> a lot to the Cal documents. So the other, aside from the, 500 series stuff that I've got warming up that I'm going to need is I got the meter warming up here. Um, the 7603 is on. I think I'm going to need it for a little bit and the Rigel's on just warming up so we get the best accuracy in the measurements. Um, both of my 92As are in the 9000 series serial numbers so we're going to be doing the B7000 and up calibration. 70,000 and up. I think that's it. I got uh, about 10 more minutes to wait before I can get into uh, doing the calibration. And we will go from there. Don't know if this plugin's working. Don't know if this plugin's bad. Uh, but we'll find out as we're going through the Cal document. See if there's anything in there we need to fix. Okay, well, I've run into my first problem. So I'm not even out of step A1 yet, which is just preliminary calibration. And I've also, I've noticed 
some differences between these two units already. This is B094. This one is B098. And there's a resistor right here where you hook a meter to check the delay time centering and you adjust this control right here. Well, this one doesn't have the resistor. This one does. So that uh, this is obviously, I don't know, this is a newer serial number, so this would be a newer revision, so they removed it. But uh, yeah, so I'm already running into documentation issues and things like that. The good news is I have at least the first section done, so this one's gonna be a long one. But that's okay, we will get it done. So the way you set it up is you hook the meter to the test points and then you adjust the, you adjust the delay time to zero and then that adjusts the center of the knob to zero. So you adjust uh, you adjust this to zero, then you adjust the pot over here for a meter reading of zero. I, uh, I got it to 100 nanovolts to zero, so uh, point, point 0.1 millivolts. So close enough to zero for our purposes, especially for a device this old. So the next step I got to do is set the main triggering level control is um, adjust the main triggering internal DC balance. So we'll do that here real quick. Okay, I'm a little off here because it wants a main trigger point right at the center line. Um, just double check. Okay, so I have to adjust the R75 for right at center line. So this needs to come down just a little bit. R75 is hard to get to. Why is that moving left and right as opposed to... Okay, here we go. The contrast was misadjusted, so I couldn't bring the main sweep into uh, onto the screen. So, let's set this back up here real quick. There we go. Okay. So I need to bring this tail end down to the center line. to make it look correct. So we will adjust the DC balance. Clean the control just a little bit. There is the DC balance. Okay, A2's done. Okay, now I need to adjust the trigger sensitivity. And let me figure out what I need to do there, and then I will be right back. Okay, so to get the waveform down here, I'm going to back off the triggering. So we're still triggering on the positive edge, but I want to go all the way to the bottom. Now the problem is, I can go all the way to the bottom before I detrigger. And the calibration document says that that's not advisable due to sporadic triggering, so I need to adjust the main triggering sensitivity level, which is R175. They want the waveform to detrigger between 1 and 3 divisions. So that's my adjustment. There's 0. That's point 0.1. That's about 0.3, so I have about that much adjustment range that I'm playing with. 
I'm going to set this right at 0.2 like that. And now I'll set it to detrigger right at 0.2. So let me get the potentiometer here real quick. That's the one all the way in the back on the bottom. And we'll see what we can do about getting this to detrigger. So right there, it's not triggered. And it's kind of false triggering. the way that adjusted so let me readjust that here real quick all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the intensity control to bring it up to about 0.2 because that's nothing Let's bring it up on the other end. Okay. So what I have to do is bring that back to point two. Right about there. All right, so where do we detrigger now? As we go up. I want to detrigger right about there. Yep, that's it right there. Okay, so that's what I want. Right at that, right at this division mark. If I move this control just a little bit further, we lose triggering right at about 2.2 .2 divisions. So that is perfect. So I like that. Because if I just dial the control back, bink, there it is. All right. And we are on the positive edge and that is going up so that is correct and done the correct way all right so that is a three main triggering sensitivity also in the calibration document there is zoom out here real quick there's a bunch of waveforms to give you examples as to how it should work external all right r99 and this is just adjusting for uh, center line you have to readjust the main triggering control back to zero after you do the test that is not mentioned in the manual realistically do not do one of these if you haven't done a few of these before because the I am finding a lot of missing information in the manual not necessarily missing information but just steps they don't tell you that you have to do for setup of the scope okay there is step four the external DC balance. Okay, yet another deviation. Um, R90 was implemented in serial number 95,000. So this version has it. R90 is right there. This guy, because he's serial number 94,756, doesn't. So, no adjustment to make there. At least on this plugin, there will be on this one. Yep, and I just checked the board. There is no potentiometer to, adju to adjust on lower than 
9500. So that one we don't even adjust. Okay, well, we just did all that calibration work, and it turns out the indicator was off on my knob. So that is not at the zero point, which is why this isn't down here. And I can't trigger lower than that. So I will have to readjust this knob, and I will have to do this all over again. So let me do that, and then I will be back. Okay, so I've gotten the triggering retuned. Um, it was a knob problem, so I can go up. I can trigger all the way at the top edge of the waveform, and I can now trigger below 3.5, because right there's about 3.5, so I can go down to the bottom, trigger lower than that, so... I am within spec for triggering, and everything is looking very good. So that concludes up through A5. I have to do A6, the preliminary delayed trigger adjustment, here in a little bit. But that's where we're at, so everything seems to be working okay so far. Okay, we have to do everything we just did to the delay trigger. So I've preset the delay trigger all to center values, and we need to adjust the center sensitivity. Uh, one thing that the document did, uh, it gives you what to do to set up the 7B92A. I am assuming it needs the same four divisions at 50 millivolts as the previous adjustment. It does not say that, but that's what I'm going to go with, because that's where we adjusted the main triggering. So... I have that set. I need to actually put, get some brightness here. Yeah, there's our four divisions of display. So now the first thing we need to adjust is the triggering sensitivity, which is R320 for a sweep trigger point, point 0.3 divisions from the bottom of the waveform. I'm sorry, I skipped step F. Adjust the internal DC balance R255 for a sweep trigger point at the graticule center line. Triggered light on. And we're going to adjust this real quick. And it's not doing anything because you can't see the... All right, give me one second. You can't see the uh, intensified portion. That's what I'm actually adjusting. Okay, I had to get the right one displaying. So the sweep is now displayed. So I need to adjust this. Actually, I need to position that a little higher. So I need to adjust this so it's triggering. That is not what I am needing to set. It's way off, but that is very far off. Okay, let me let me look at this again. Okay, that makes more sense. I had the wrong pot. It's R255, which is towards the back of the board up top. This is very fiddly. All right, there we go. Sweep is starting at the center point. So my reference on that one was right... Oop, can't see that. It was right here at that location. All right. Next up is adjusting the trigger sensitivity. So I'm going to read through that and I'll be right back. Okay, so it's exactly the same as the other one. I want a actually I want to control 0.3 divisions from the bottom. So, instead of 0.2 this will bring this back up. And dive down here. There's our detrigger. So what I want, that's point two, right up 
I'm going to judge that right there is 0.3. So we'll do the sensitivity. Just to detrigger. So, so right there, let me zoom in on that. I'll use the magnifier on the camera to see if I can't get a, a little bit better adjustment. So I'll be right back. So I'm cheating here and I'm using the camera as a magnifying glass. So what I want is the trigger point. It's a little low. So I want the trigger to detune right about there. So I need to come slightly down on this control. And if I... That right there is about perfect. So right in between those two tick marks is where it's detuning or where it's detriggering. So that is perfect right there. Let me zoom back out and then I'll be right back. Okay, next up is the external DC balance and that was the control I was trying to use before. So we need to adjust this for... Ooh just triggering right at the center line. So right about there. There we go. All right. Let me get the um, vertical amplifier reset. I got to go back up to one volt per division. And then we just need to check the uh, delay triggering range. So I'll get that set up and I'll be right back. Okay, I have everything set up. So we're gonna check it. It should go all the way to the top, which it does, and then blanks. And then it should go all the way. It should go within 3.5 volts from the center line down below, which it does. We're actually probably, yeah, right about 0.5. Eh, a little bit over that. It's about points. about 0.7 so our balances our balance points are really well we can trigger everything on the so we are good there so that looks the way it's supposed to so that finishes up a nine check it on the negative side Everything looks okay. Check it on the internal. Everything looks real good there. Check it on the positive for the internal. Yeah. Yeah. Everything looks very good there. All right. Everything looks really good. So we will... Uh, continue on okay I was just verifying something else because the manual says it wants it at, at one volt per division well I have a 191 and I have a 503 and I checked them neither one of them can drive a 50 ohm load to eight divisions of display at one volt per division so because the amplitude range of the 191s only uh, 0.5 to 5 volts so you've got to check it at 0.1 millivolts as opposed to 1 volt per division man there's a lot of stuff out in this cal document okay but i'm at a10 checking the low frequency triggering so let me read through that and figure out what we need to do Okay, I uh, found more inf missing information in the service manual. Um, this actually comes from the spec sheet in and of itself. The, basically what happened is the 7B92A needs a minimum of 100 millivolts of signal at 30 hertz. 
or eight divisions of display for internal triggering. So it can't trigger on a half a division of display. And if you have less than eight divisions of display, it will trigger down to 100 millivolts at 30 hertz only on the external of the plug-in. So there we go. Um, it is triggering. Everything's going as it's supposed to. But uh, there is a lot of missing information in the service manual, probably by design, just given that this particular plug-in is not, was never intended for the hobbyist. Uh, this is a professional plug-in. Also, 30 hertz is pushing it to its absolute lowest range. If, uh, if you're needing to look at a, if I need to look at a 30 hertz signal, I'm going to use the 7603. I'm not going to be bringing into service a 7904A and a 500 megahertz scope to look at 30 megahertz, or 30 hertz of signal. There are other tools in the lab that can do that for me just fine. So, everything is working. We can, uh, continue with the calibration because the low frequency triggering is working. We get into this plug-in's bread and butter because we get into some medium frequency triggering and then we'll be checking the high frequency triggering. But um, this is at its absolute lowest range. Under 30 hertz, this thing won't even... Well, it will trigger down to DC on DC, but um, other than DC, 30 hertz is its absolute lowest that it'll trigger on. So it's working. Okay, we're checking a the low frequency reject. So we have eight divisions of a 60 hertz sine wave going into the plug-in. And we are going to hit low frequency reject. And it detriggered. Okay, so we have eight divisions of 60 hertz signal on the screen. We're checking the low frequency rejection triggering. So at AC, we should have trigger, which we do. Turn on the low frequency rejection. We lose trigger. Trigger light's not lit anymore. High frequency rejection. We get our trigger back. DC, we have our trigger. So the low frequency trigger is working as expected. So we'll move on to A12, which is 20 megahertz triggering. Okay, we have stable triggering. I need stable triggering with AC, low frequency reject, we stay trigger, and DC, and I can get stable triggering with DC. So that is working, and we'll try it on the external side too. I get triggering, brighten this up. Okay, there we go, now we're locked in. Okay, it's a very noisy environment in here, so getting it synced up and getting it locked in is actually kind of hard when the signal's this small, especially with all the switching power supplies, the Wi-Fi noise, everything like that. I got spurious stuff going on, going on everywhere, so very fiddly controls. This is external, this is uh, low frequency rejection. That's AC, DC, got it, there it is. So the 20 megahertz triggering is working correctly. We are on to 500 megahertz triggering. That one's gonna be interesting. So let's get the, uh, I'll have to get the high frequency generator out hook it up, and we'll probably end up doing the same thing. Okay, so this is just checking for jitter on the trigger at 500 megahertz. We're at 500 megahertz. Low frequency reject is good. AC is good. And that's on the external. Internal AC is good. High frequency reject obviously detunes. Low frequency reject is good. DC is good, no jitter there, everything looks wonderful. Check the delay time real quick. Mm 
very stable. High frequency reject D D triggers. AC low frequency reject is very stable. AC is very stable. And this is the external delay trigger. AC is good. Low frequency reject is good. DC is good. High frequency reject, it still even triggers with high frequency reject because it's delay trigger, so the main triggering doesn't count. So it is actually working very, very well. So the next one is checking the high frequency sync triggering. So I'll get that one set up and then I'll be right back. Okay, and setting this up with the high frequency sync, you wanna make sure everything is triggered at an extremely low level. With that being the case, I need to now add some signal, which is because of my attenuator, it's not quite getting there, but that's okay because we are rock solid on the trigger. Everything looks wonderful. So we're going to do external divide by 10 and everything is working and no jitter to speak of. This looks really really good so that is perfect so I now need to just check the line triggering and then we will be done no sorry got one more step after line triggering so let me set up for line triggering and I'll be right back okay so what's supposed to happen is when we're doing the line triggering if I detune this the trigger light should go off which it does Come back to zero, it's triggered. Go back to the other extreme end, it goes off, that it does. So line triggering is working exactly like it's supposed to. Last step is checking single, single sweep. Okay, just checking the single sweep functionality. Reset it, and there it goes. So you can see it does one pass and then it's done. Hit internal, reset single sweep. It's triggering every time I hit it. So that is working normally and everything looks good there. So that concludes the trigger testing. So we are actually on to the horizontal time base adjustments. Okay, so with time markers, we're checking to make sure this intensified zone is three and a half divisions above the bottom sweep, which it is. Everything looks okay there. and they overlap and the alternate trace goes off which is to be expected uh, and we have no more delayed sweep and it also wants us to check a readout so we have some readout and then we'll turn this on and then we get a Delayed sweep down there, and the readout's going away, so the readout logic is working correctly. So we're on to step 4C. You need to set the multi to nine. That is exactly 9.0. And our 425 does need some adjustment. Oh wait, sorry, you do 425 first, or 495 first, and now we go back to one, one, 
it's 425. I was off by the positioning control a little bit. That's why I'm having a hard time with this adjustment. Now I'm on the time marks. My sweep is not right. Oh, I missed one of the most important steps. I have to adjust the sweep cal first. That's why I'm having a hard time. Because if you'll look, I have this lined up right here but we're off over here. So none of the other adjustments will actually line up until we do that. Now I will have enough adjustment when I go to nine. Okay, there we go for nine. Okay, I'm gonna get square on this. It's be it's probably because I'm parallaxed on. Let me get square on. Well, I think I may have figured out what my one of my problems is with getting this thing calibrated. That's supposed to be time mark signals, and that's supposed to be one millisecond. I'm off by fifty percent, so that's obviously not gonna work. And that's also not very stable, so that's jumping around like crazy. So, all right. Well, I I got the 184 warming up. The problem with the 184 is it is a very uh, it's a very stable crystal, but the crystal needs two hours of thermal soak before it actually functions right. So, I'm gonna move the TG501 down into a different frame. See if the TM5000 frame is messing with it. If it's not, this guy's got some problems. So let me uh, move him down and see if I can get him to stabilize. But uh, that's useless. Well, we may have dirty power. That's now, all I did was move the generator into a TM504 frame from the 5006 frame which is up there, and I'm infinitely better in terms of the reading. That's point. That's 1.0, and it's still got some warm-up to do, so I may have a bad power frame. I may have to look into that and see why that is causing me some grief. I think that has a switching power supply in it, to be honest. I like it because of the act of cooling, but if the power supply is not outputting correctly, that's going to be a problem. Well, I'll let that run for a little while and see what stabilizes and see if we can continue. All right, that took a while, but I ended up fiddling with the controls quite a bit, and I now have it lined up. There's one. And there is nine exactly. So the knob was off. The silver knob was off. The power supply was bad. There's all kinds of weird stuff happening on that one, but everything's good. It's all in measurement, or it's all in spec, and uh, everything is A-OK. -okay. So we will uh, let that go. And the next step is adjusting the delayed sweep calibration. So we're up to C5. Okay, tuning the delay sweep. It is, this is about perfect in terms of adjustment. We can see it's off down here. So we're gonna need to adjust that just a little bit. So I will, uh, we need to adjust R458. Oh, 
for one one mark per division. And that's going to be about good right there. So now we got to do the adjusting the sweep registration. So I need to set delay time to zero. Actually, those are lining up exactly, so that adjustment's good. I don't need to mess with that at all. So next is adjusting the position centering. So let me get that set up, and I'll be right back. Okay. So this one, let me make sure I have the right control again. R935. This one's kind of confusing. So there's the first time mark. They want the second time mark lined up with the first graticule line. So I gotta get this this time mark over there. going to be it right about there. So it is all set up. Uh, everything is looking very good on this. So the sweep length is good. Everything looks to be in good shape. I also need to check 10 nanosecond markers. And it looks like the 10 nanosecond markers are in good shape as well. So looks like everything is in order there okay here's two nanosecond timing marks and we want the second timing mark lined up so there we go C540 so they want one mark per division so it's off just a bit, so we got to stretch it out. That is actually C540. So I am going to take a look at what C540 is. Okay, C540. We have a capacitor that we are adjusting, so I'm going to use a non-inductive tuning tool and C540 is the upper upper capacitor and this is not going to take much So over the center eight divisions, one time mark per division, we are good. Now we have to do 20 nanosecond timing. 20 nanosecond marks.
there's some artifacting on this timer on the 20 nanosecond marks. My tens are fine. My calibrator is having a hard time. All right, let me switch over to the uh, other calibrator. And we will see what it needs to do if it's... It may just be too hot. That frame's really warm. But I can't use that to adjust that, so... Let me... Um, cool this off, and I'll warm up the... 184 and see if we can't make something happen. So I'll be back in a while because that needs a, a while to thermal soak, the, thermal soak the crystal. So I'll be back in a little while. Well, it was a thermal problem with the plug-in. The plug-in was just too hot. It was overheating. That's why I like the TM5000 frames, the powered ones. My top frame looks like it's not having a problem. Everything's stable. Everything looks good. So I guess the next video is going to be tearing apart that bottom frame and fixing the power supply in it because it's got probably some heavy ripples. It'll just be caps need to be replaced. But nice triggering on 20 nanosecond markers. So we'll let everything just warm up just a little bit more. And then uh, I will uh, do the adjustment. Not to torture the tube. We'll just turn that off while we wait. Okay, to adjust the 20 nanosecond timing, it's C440. Actually, I take that back. I don't need to do delayed yet. Actually, you do non delayed. Which is C721. Ah, they're labeled wrong in the manual. They're not 2 nanosecond timing, it's 20 nanosecond timing. C721 is the bigger capacitor right underneath C540. So we will adjust this real quick. There we go. Yeah, we're off a little bit over here. So we need to, it's running a little fast. We need to slow it down just a touch. Right there looks perfect. This is the reference I was using right here. So this spot looks perfect. Also non-inductive tuning tool, ceramic. 20 nano. So we're doing the delay timing 20 nanosecond. All right, pull that down out of the way. There we go. Okay, 20, 20 nanosecond delayed sweep. This is looking a touch fast, not too bad. As in, that's about good. That's about as good as I'm going to get it.
Okay, I did that wrong. So the way you set it is, at three, you line this up with the vertical line, set it to nine, then use the cap to line that up. And you do that until it's all set. So I'll bounce back and forth there for, for a minute and adjust that, and then I'll be right back. Okay, I got the adjustment done. Had to do it about four times, but there's nine. And we'll back this out to... There's three, and the edges line up. So that one's done. All right, I need to move some stuff around, and then I will be right back. All right, so this one was a little confusing. Um, the pulse, this is the fast rise, should be on the right of the gradigal center. If I plug the extension in, the added capacitance will slow it down so you adjust it for 3.5 from the left. And then when you take it out, because right now there's no extension, the plugin's just in the frame. You want to check that the pulse is to the right of the graticule center. So it is. So positioning is done. That one was confusing. And that actually concludes all the adjustments for the 7B92. Everything is just checking linearities and sweeps and things like that. So there is no more adjustments to do for this calibration. What, I'll, what I will do is I'll flip over to the uh, time marks again, and I'll just run through the time marks again so we can just verify the plugins working. And, uh, then we, and then I'll finish up the checks, and then we'll be done. I won't bore you guys with all the checking. Okay, I will uh, turn the readout on so you guys can see what's going on. We're at 20 milliseconds. And that looks good, pulsing as it should. 10. That looks healthy. Five. We look good there. Two. Looks good. Three, or one. Looks good. 500 mic. Looks good. 200 mic. Looks good. 300 mic looks good. 400 mic looks good. Or no, sorry, 50 mic. 20 mic. 10 mic. 5 mic. 2 mic. 1. 500 nano, 200 nano, 200 that looks good, 100 nano, 200 looks good. 50 nano. That looks healthy. 20 nano. This will be healthy because we actually adjusted this one, so that one's in good shape. 10 nano. There we go. Everything's in good shape. The brightness problem I was having before when I was dealing with it was my rep rate was too low. Uh, I had it down at like 100 kilohertz or I had like 10 kilohertz or something like that. I had, If I cranked it up to a megahertz, I had plenty of brightness on the tube. So everything was good there. So this plug-in is ready to be put into service.
Thanks for stopping by the lab and taking a look at this Tektronix 7B92 time base. This is almost as fast as they made in the 7000 series time bases. The 7B10 stuff is up to a gigahertz, but this is 500 megahertz, so this is the best part. This one's ready to go back into service. If you guys have any comments, I do check all the comments down below. I do read every single one. Let me know how I'm doing. If there's anything you'd like to see, let me know. I'll see what I can make happen. Thanks a lot, and I will see you guys in the next video. One thing to add. The service manual for this one this this one was confusing um, the time this particular time base was very confusing uh, the service manual there was a lot missing in it there was a lot wrong with it uh, probably that's because this was the 500 megahertz time base this was not your average um, hobbyist grade equipment um, this this frame with this time base with the 7A19 amplifiers was $47,000 in 1990. So it's old, but it's it's still very good equipment, high-speed equipment, and it's a good addition to the lab. So that's why I think there was some missing information in the service manual. But thanks for stopping by. If you guys like what you're seeing, let me know. I do read all the comments, and uh, we'll see what I can make happen if you guys have any suggestions. And I will see you guys in the next video.